done. What? Huh? Ah! Hello, I'm the Nastasha Craig. I remember it so you don't have to. Okay, I am excited. I am so very excited. Today, we get to review the Alvin and the Chipmunks movie. Oh my god, I love this film. With his hair-raising adventures, singing new songs along with old ones, and traveling the world while escaping danger around every turn. It's strange, because I swear I reviewed this film before in a crossover. But that doesn't matter. We are looking at it today in all its glory, and I am psyched. My friends and I haven't seen this movie in years. Wait, why aren't you wearing green? I'm colorblind. Oh, well, who cares? Let's get ready for this awesome chipmunk adventure. No! Oh, shitty CGI one. Christ, is this what people think of when they hear the chipmunks movie? Yes. Uh -uh. With the movie making nutloads of money at the box office, we have cemented ourselves as the only real Chipmunks franchise. How are you able to keep making these films? Yeah, we know kids will watch anything, but who's taking them to go see it? Or even creepier, watching it themselves. Simple. A demographic that never lets us down. The Awe Girls. The Awe Girls? Women and teens who will watch anything simply to say, Your love of cuteness is ruining a perfectly good franchise! But they're just so adorable! We're not here to analyze story. We just want to look at cute little animals do cute little things. Oh, I just want to pinch their cheeks! Oh, you cute! The ladies are ruining the dignity of a great adventure series! Oh, really? Isn't your movie about chipmunks who operate balloons for diamond smuggling? It made a lot of sense in the 80s! More than Eleanor not wearing green! Hey, I'm colorblind, okay? What? Me too. Enough of that! Look, our movie makes a lot more sense and that's final. Okay, if we can prove that your movie is bullshit, will you acknowledge that ours is better? No. Oh. Well, I guess I'll just review the movie then. You do that. I kind of thought that this was going to lead to an ongoing debate. Yeah, like the hell of comedic identities that we could work off right. of, but no. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll just call you two if I need a musical number. Okay. Seems fair. Sure. Okay. Bye. Um, here's the review. The film opens with the chipmunks in a tree singing the song You Had a Bad Day. A perfect tune to foreshadow the next hour and a half. Hey, don't waste time developing characters and instead cut down their house and take it to a building in LA. There, a songwriter named Dave, played by Jason I'm Still Gonna Say Mallrats Was My Biggest Letdown Lee, is late for an audition. He meets up with his neighbor and partakes in at least one of the top five words exposition scenes ever. Let me guess, you're late for something again. Same old Dave. Not following you. The guy's always fooling around. You can't handle a serious relationship. You know, why don't you just turn to the camera and say, Hi audience, I'm Dave. If you look under your seat, you'll see a trading card with my stats on it. I know it's an awkward way to introduce you to who I am, but trust me, it's much less awkward than if we tried working it into the story. We're not really good at that talking like humans thing. But they sure are good at ruining David Cross's career, though. Hey, back off, man. This is Dave Seville. I'm still on every year's worst movie list. Actually, to his credit, David Cross is one of the few genuinely funny things in this movie. He plays a music producer who clearly doesn't give a shit that he's in a Chipmunks movie. So he gives this delightfully passive-aggressive performance. Uh, hey, uh, love you. I'm back. You know what, Dave? 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 Dave is not here. I had a nightmare. Oh. If they could make a doll out of this guy, I would totally buy it. We're the Chipmunks for crying out loud! He sadly, though, is not a fan of Dave's songwriting. The original inspiration came to me- Your song sucks, Dave. What? Your song? It's awful. I hate it. Have you tried speeding it up so it sounds like high-pitched ear penetration? I mean, I need something new. I need something fresh. That, that, I need that is the next new. big thing. I need Christmas and hula hoops! But Dave shows them by stealing their muffins- Hey! Yes, that scene definitely needed thrilling muffin-stealing music. Why don't you just play a Latin choir when the chipmunks sneak into it? Look out, raspberry! He then proceeds to throw out the muffins. The fuck's wrong with you?
with you, those look delicious! And decides to throw out all his music equipment too. Take that free money, eBay will have none of you. But don't worry, he can make all that cash back through these product placements. This is the greatest day of my life. We can get a lot of cute B-roll footage with these. Ah! Hey, I thought you said you weren't debating. We're not, we're awing. It's cute. Don't you have a cat video to share or something? We don't need to. We've consumed so much cute that it's literally in our bodies. <coughs> Hey, look, I coughed another one! Oh. <laughs> I need to stay away from you. Dave tries to see what's going on, but apparently Alvin's fucking blood hungry. <laughs> Bet you didn't know this was the R-rated version. Oh God, stay away from the nuts! As much as we wish that would happen, it doesn't. But he does fart in his face! <laughs> it's funny, because it came from his butt! They finally knock him out and try to figure what to do with him. I'll need three garbage bags, a shovel, some disinfectant, some latex gloves, and oregano. I don't like how quickly he came up with that. Theodore, I can't go back to prison. Why did you have to kill that prostitute before Alvin? She wasn't a prostitute, she was an escort. Big difference! But Dave gets up and they introduce themselves. I'm Simon, the, the smart one. He's Alvin, the awesomest one. And I'm Theodore. Oh, nice to meet you. I guess Theodore doesn't have any personality traits. He fell out of the tree at birth. Outside of butt for verbal abuse. We talk. It's creepy. Unnatural. Somewhat evil. Hey, it's the critical praises for the front of the box. So Dave, being the remarkably unlikable character that he is, throws the cute little chipmunks out into the rain. Now where's that puppy I wanted to hit with the handle of my gun? But his heart softens when he realizes he can make a quick buck off of them. Wait, you guys can sing too? This is amazing. The talking didn't mean shit, but now that you can sing, you're of worth. Here's the deal. You guys sing my songs, you get to sleep here. Usually in the music industry, it's the other way around. You sleep here, you get to sing my songs. I don't want to come home and find a bunch of rabbits and skunks on my couch. Filthy creatures, Dave. Never associate with them. Wow, animal racist much? We need to build a wall, Dave. Oh, by the way, with them being kids, you ever wonder where their parents are? Our parents were hippies. They left early to join a commune. Explained! So while trying to think of a song to be their outlet, the chipmunks start humming in their sleep. Want a plane that loops the loop. Yeah, pretty sad when animal snoring can write a better melody than you can. Listen, I think I hear my dog vomiting! <coughs> Opera! This inspires him to write a song, but not before realizing Simon's vision might be a little off. Try these. Wow, thank God the makers of Plastic Santas thought their toy was nearsighted, so gave them all Simon's prescription. That was a magical kind of dumb. We're gonna have food all winter, so if you start storing it, it's gonna get gross, and we're gonna have rodent. That's our word, dick slice. Non-talking rodents. So they try singing the famous Christmas song, and we get to hear Day's famous scream of Alvin. It's, it's a hamster wheel's butt. Alvin! Whoa! Well, that was superbly half-assed. It's one of the most famous trademarks of the chipmunks, and there's just no effort to it. In fact, every time he says it, he sounds less and less angry and more like the kid from Troll 2. Alvin! Oh my god! But then again, what do you expect when his voice is beyond hoarse in this movie? Oh, you're sorry? That's fantastic! If you flood my house, you're dead. Go away! Leave me alone! He sounds like Bob Dylan if he's been gargling cactus covered in sandpaper. My house is always a mess. Tomorrow I'm gonna call the exterminator. Don't go, I, I can explain. Maybe his voice got tired from going home after every shoot and screaming into his pillow. Oh, I can't believe I'm in this shit. I can't believe I'm in this shit. What? Um, Mr. Cross, you're in a movie. Action. Ugh. Get this, it's Dave really tries to show off the singing vermin, but apparently they get stage fright. Because if there's any characteristic I associate with Alvin, it's stage fright. 
But it's okay, because they get him fired from his job at an advertising firm. Well, not because they drew Theodore's butt on his charts, but because they spelled half the S's backwards and the other half forward. Who does that? Wouldn't you choose one or the other? You wouldn't go back and forth. I think I'll just clean out my office. Sounds good. I'm sure glad we paid the extra money for Jane Lynch in that role. Though to be fair, that is a very sexy chart. Mm -hmm. Get out of here! Go! Things seem even worse at home. Theodore, did you just... It's a raisin, Dave. Prove it. Mm -hmm. Where's Alvin? Yeah! Alvin? You owe me big time. Chipmunks eating shit! That's what I wanted to see! Isn't it what you want to see? I paid good money to see Alvin and the Chipmunks eating shit! You know, what's going on in the other film right now? Oh, look at that! The chip bats are battling sharks in Bermuda and the Chipmunks are almost eaten alive by crocodiles! What do we got in this movie? Chipmunks eating shit! Yes! Yes, yes, yes! You know, maybe marketing wanted to train kids into eating crap before actually selling it to them! The funny thing is, in the trailer, it's shown as Alvin who eats the turd instead of Simon. That means Alvin must have been so pissed off at this scene that he refused to have it in the movie. Fuck you guys! No, fuck you guys all to hell! You want me, the star of the movie, to eat shit for you? What the fuck is wrong with you? You can take this two girls one cup full of crap and shove it up your ass! You, you hear me? Understand. Up your no, ass! Where it belongs, we, not in my mouth! Really, no, this, no! You already tricked me into doing it for the trailer, you sick bastards! But I thought that really was a raisin! You lied really to me! Funny. You lied to me! No, you can ask my dick if I care, because I don't! Kiss my ass in hell, you pathetic twat! Okay, Simon, you're up. I don't know if I'm comfortable with this. Ah! You don't get paid as much as Alvin. You want to see what I can really do to you? Proudly eating shit for you, sir. But Dave's neighbor calls about her date. Hi, Dave. It's Claire Wilson calling, and... Oh, why did I just say my last name? That was weird. Um, I guess I'm just a little nervous about coming over for dinner. I'll be there at 7. Uh, okay. Bye. Wow. Even for literally a phoned-in line, that was really a phoned-in line. The only thing sounding less interested than her on the phone is her in real life. Please, I'm begging you. No games, no fooling around. No acting either. I want to stay out of the squeakles as much as possible. My life is being sabotaged by talking chipmunks. Uh, Mr. Lee, that's not in the script. I know, I'm just making a declaration. Feeling bad, the chipmunks convinced the producer that he dropped acid as that's the only way he would agree to sign them to a record recording deal as opposed to donate them to science. That video of your little guys? 10 million hits already on YouTube! It's blowing up bigger than that gem twat! The Chipmunks start recording albums and make Dave all sorts of money. It's a shame money can't buy love, though. At least, not a butthole like Dave's love. Make sure we understand each other here. I'm not your dad or anything. You're like a dad. Well, not really. I'm more of a piss on a child's heart kind of person. The kind that the plot says should be your father, but anyone with a brain is like, he's an insensitive asshole. They go and perform Witch Doctor in front of a clearly paid-to-look-interested crowd. Yeah, I can fake having fun to this. As the film continues to show that it doesn't need a Witch Doctor as much as a Script Doctor. I'm covering your rise to fame. I'm sorry about that night. I, I really thought that you... That I was insane? I didn't know you were gonna be famous. I totally would have put up with all the non-commitment stuff I talked about earlier if I knew that. And it looks like Dave is still okay with being a douche. You're like a family. He doesn't want a family. You know, why don't you guys go and play or raid the dessert table or something? I'm still not convinced you're not a leftover high from My Name is Earl. I can't love what I don't know is really there. But Cross is excited to get the merchandise going. It's Alvin. That looks nothing like Alvin. Well then, it's a perfect toy to represent the movie. We got to expand the Monk's fan base. Forget about the music. The music is but a means to the big money. Okay, if we could put away a nickel every time a movie says being an advertising sellout is bad while being an advertising sellout, we could feed all the people of the world. Twice. So Cross looks them in the eye and tells them that they'd all be better off with him. At least he tries looking them in the eye. He's over there, Cross. He's over there. Look down. Look down, Cross. No, to your left. 
to your left. Was there a shortage of sticks with tennis balls on them? Dave's holding you back, you know? I could be making you 20 large a day. You guys will be so big that one day we'll go up against Star Wars! Yeah, and beat them, really, yeah, yeah. So Cross gives them everything they always wanted, including an attractive housemaid. She's also a masseuse. <laughs> okay, first of all, kid. Second of all, chipmunk. Third of all, I don't want to think of a kid chipmunk getting a happy ending. I know it's technically just combining the first two, but that is such a big one, I thought it deserved repeating! <laughs> Causing Dave to act even more like duck shit. Well, Uncle Ian says we're like his family. Well, if you love Uncle Ian so much and you don't think I'm watching out for you, why don't you go live with Uncle Ian? So they go live with Uncle Ian. I told you, Dave. I never lose. Wait till you see the ways I tried to sabotage Chipwrecked. Cue that tedious B-roll footage. <laughs> okay, in the other film they'd be singing in the ruins of Rome. Not stealing whatever tune is popular at the time, but instead singing a new rockin' song. How is this any better? You don't understand. Cute anything in a toy monster truck equals three adorables and one precious. Wait, there's a formula to this? Oh, stay out of this, Michael Bay! Oh, I've been targeting the wrong demographic. I should've been making kids' films this whole time. You made Transformers. Those are kids' films. Oh, no, no, no. That was my most adult work. Deep Wang is very symbolic. But I really want to take a crack at this chipmunk formula. Let's see. <clears throat> All three of them blow up. <gasps> oh, dear. I'm not very good at this. But Dave realizes he misses the plot and should probably admit that he was a horse's taint the whole time. Which is good, because Cross was almost gonna send the chipmunks on an extra long tour of Europe. Oh no! That'd be awful! I dare even say, entertaining! But on top of that, it looks like their voices are giving out from being worked too hard. You three sound like you've been gargling nails. Hey, don't talk about Jason Lee that way. So he recommends that they pull a Milli Vanilli. Lip sync! Isn't that like cheating? No, it's not like cheating. This is more like helping. It's like buying the rights to a song, speeding it up, and then selling it to you again. Totally not cheating. But Dave tries to sneak in and call to them. Alvin! 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 <gasps> I heard that faint yell not really louder than the last faint yell. Alex, what are you doing? Whoa, wardrobe malfunction! Cover those with some Janet Jackson nipples, would you? Show some shame. So the chipmunks decide to sabotage the concert. <laughs> Come on, let's put all these singers and dancers out of a job. That'll show the guy who already has a ton of money. Unemployment line is that way, poor musicians. Get them! But apparently kidnapping the talent is legal now, as Cross throws them in a cage and plans to still send them on their tour. I'm sure this camera tilt down to the dolls means nothing. They just ruined the concert. No one will come to see them. Dave, they're chipmunks who talk. People will come. Isn't that what the producers say every time they pitch a sequel? So they get to their vehicles and partake in a thrilling climax! Step on it, Dave! Or they want to just end this as quickly as we do. Of course I came back. We're a family. Uh, am I going crazy or did he just say family? I know. You guilt trip me into saying it. Just like a real functioning unit. I really missed you guys. I missed you too, Dave. So did Alvin. He's just too cool to admit it. Yeah, too macho. Yeah, because that was the personality trait I clearly got from him. Macho. In fact, I just realized, for a movie called Alvin and the Chipmunks, Alvin has little to no personality. Which is strange, because he was always the biggest personality out of all of them. He was egotistical, a schemer, delusional that he was the best, even though he still had a good heart. This one was apparently... Macho! As macho as this piece of paper is, which I've suddenly decided to call macho, so that automatically makes it macho. You stay out of this macho piece of paper! You're too macho! That's so something he would say. So they drive home in Dave's poor car, reflective of his humble income, to his gigantic IKEA house worthy of any home furnishing magazine, where Alvin again screws up. Whoa! Oh! Not gonna say it. Please do, the credits are right around the corner. Are you still not gonna say it? Nope. You are holding us hostage until you do. Please say the thing, you're not even really that good at saying. 
I'm gonna say it. Elvis! I'm gone before you could even finish it! So yeah, this movie's pretty bad. Is it the worst? No. The chipmunks are pretty cute and you get a laugh sometimes. But they just needed to be in a better script. This is every dumb rock star story for kids that they for some reason think kids never catch on to. And judging by how many sequels they've made, maybe they're right. But kids deserve better stories and characters and time devoted to giving them something creative and exciting. This is just a bland mesh compared to what we could have gotten. And I'm sorry, the original Chipmunks movie is so much better. It's exciting, weird, funny, visually interesting, has original songs in it, and has fun traveling the world and giving kids an adventure. This is just Jim with three hairy testicles. Yeah. yeah! Whatever, your movie makes no sense and is incredibly dated. Holds up better than your piece of crap. Oh yeah? What do you want to bet we can out Chipmunk movie you? <laughs> Oh no! If they find out our films are inferior, our squeakles will be demolished! To the ruins of franchises! Hey, could you give me some advice on my kid's movie formula? Some folks frown or even throw up that wish in one's movie that I like. Ready to bash their little brains with a club Gonna horn my film tonight If you're living in a past world You dinosaurs You're more dated than a calendar Your films don't mean dick anymore now Cause we're the real Chipmunks movie Where's your sequels? You know our films are goddamn funny cheap To your Adam Sandler watchers You're used to shut up kids folks can't stand We'd rather be corny but imaginative Than a literal shit-eating band What we have's adventure that's creative Your CGI sucks balls, lots of ball, huh? You can't count all the shits we give now Cause we're the real Chipmunks movie here you're written by jackass is looking for a check. All you got is a board chasing the heat. Keep acting like kids are dummies. Our business deals with Happy Meals make us the real Chipmunks movie. Songs we don't steal with mass appeal make us the real Chipmunks movie. anything? Yes, for such a competitive song, nothing was really accomplished. <sighs> Didn't he do something like this before? Did somebody say something about doing stuff before? How have we never talked? Huh. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. And welcome back again to Sequel Month. <laughs> Or in this case, Squeakwoman? No! 
That is not the case. I will not give in to your rodent-based puns, you unfunny bucket of toilet leavings. The chipmunks are an interesting franchise, to say the least. That is to say, they've been around for years and nobody's really thought that much about them until their movies. The chipmunk movies always pulled in a big amount every December when they were released. I guess people just saw them as an extra Christmas present. In the same way your cat giving you a dead mouse is technically an extra Christmas present. Though in this case I'd accept it. People started to get pissed because these movies would keep popping up, obviously having little to no effort thrown in, and yet still make enough money that their shit obnoxious faces would show up all over the place. Well, you know what? I'm sick of it. I'm sick of entertainment clearly not trying and somehow getting tons of rewards for it. So you know what? I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna figure out the magic formula in today's movie and see how to get the same results. Because if they don't have to try, I shouldn't have to try. Something of value is finally gonna come out of these damn movies. I will be rewarded for my suffering. My soul is prepared. How's yours? Let's take a look. Okay, so it opens up with the chipmunks at a concert called Save the Music. Trust me, if you want to save the music, the chipmunks are not the band you want playing there. Even dogs seem to hate them. We don't see their caretaker, Dave, played again by Jason Lee, reprising his role as a pair of shredded vocal cords with a human being attached. You gotta share the spotlight. <laughs> it's not all about you. <laughs> yeah, where would Alvin ever get that idea in a band called Alvin and the Chipmunks? You know, for the longest time, I didn't even know they were called Simon and Theodore. I thought they were called Antha and Chipmunks. But please, continue to keep him modest. I can't hear you of the thousands of fans screaming my name. This does make me realize, though, bringing back characters from a previous installment often equals success. Well, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to bring back characters from a previous review. Bring in the all girls! Aww! Come on in, ladies! If your awkward remembrance can help my fortune, all the better. <laughs> you got it, critic! Setting adorable letters to irritating. Let's do this. So Dave is taken down by a clumsy cardboard cutout, sounds like a metaphor for Lee's career to me, and he's left out of most of the movie. Okay, off you go! Wait, that's it? Yeah, apparently it's better to remind people you exist and then totally terminate you from the project. But we barely did anything! And that's what's gonna make us tons of money. Now off you go! Off you go! Out! 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 Get out! 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 To the couch of underused cameos! Hey. Weren't you in the Spy Kids 3D review? Doesn't count. I hear that. Dave tells them that they're gonna stay with their Aunt Jackie. It's just me and my ganja. <laughs> no, not that one. That would explain why she's seeing chipmunks. No, this character is similar to Miss Miller from the cartoon, though it's not Miss Miller from the cartoon because that means someone who made this movie would have had to actually watch the cartoon. Let's have a hug first. Oh, get over here, you old teddy bear. I'm not really much of a hugger. It's okay, that wasn't really much of a joke. But okay, I'm catching on, and Jackie is going to be the new caretaker, and there's of course going to be some comedic adjustments. Alright then, I introduce you to Granny Tammy! Say hi, Tammy! Hi, Sonny! What's cooking? <laughs> oh, Granny Tammy, I can tell we're going to have a lot of quirky adventures together. On to the next scene. And okay. This is what the people want to see, apparently. Man, in literally five minutes, two of the caretakers who should have been major roles have been taken out. Oh, this way, everyone will be dead at the 25 minute mark. Two dead 25 to go. <laughs> Instead, we get our son Toby, played by Zachary Levy, who you may remember as Chuck or Flynn from Tangled. And here where he plays his biggest role as the poor man's Jimmy Fallon. I'm not gonna be like, I know everything and you do this and you do that. Like my dad. Okay, now I think I'm catching on. Bring in the Daw Girls! Daw! Wait a minute, those are like the exact same characters. What? No, they're not. Yes, they are. They look like us, sound like us, they even have the exact same characteristics. Yeah, you can't even tell us apart. No, no, it's totally different. See, they have shirts of countries with no names on them. You know those obscure shirts you saw all over the place. Look, mine's US. <laughs> mine's Canada. And mine's so obscure it doesn't even have a country. It's an ironic statement. Of what? That we like irony? I'm so glad you see the brand new comedic possibilities of this. Now you three, into the studio. Wait, what? Yeah, you're still
still barely in this. We're we 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 just barely, we're barely we are. into the studio. <laughs> Pearl! Pearl! <laughs> it's so hard to make a family franchise. So they partake in all sorts of comedic gold, like singing Staying Alive, except making it about cheese balls. As you can tell by the way I use my walk, I'm a cheese balls man, no time to talk. Because somebody finally saw the comedic possibilities in that! And of course, the essential slow-mo kicking pan to open cheese balls while holding high note for a song about cheese balls. Oh, yeah, now that joke suddenly makes sense. You know, I'm not gonna lie, I expected more out of the director of Private Parts in the Brady Bunch movie, but I also suspected less out of the same director of Dr. Doolittle and John Tucker Must Die. So I guess it evens out. But fear not, literally 42 seconds later, they sing another pointless rendition of a musical hit. You sing me right around, baby, right around, like a record, baby, right around, Mm hmm yeah. Why don't you just sing what it really is, guys? You're a flimsy pretext for another rendition of a classic song gone wrong. Do you know what Dave would say if he were here right now? Oh, Dave! <laughs> I think realistically he's probably shouting, PAYCHECK! Speaking of which, how you doing over there, all girls? That's a spirit. It also looks like Toby has a cat that he talked about earlier. And look, a few scenes later, there he is! Okay, a cuddly pet side character, always a big money maker. I give you Mr. Yama the Llama! Aww. And let the hijinks ensue! I treated you good. Hey, I don't follow it, I'm just doing what they're doing! But the film tries to punish you further by taking the one funny element from the last film, David Cross, and suck out anything that made him enjoyable. I lost everything, and it's all because of them. I will get you, chipmunks. Now again, I'm pretty sure that's an exact quote from him from Chipwrecked. But he's not the only one who gets chipped off in this movie. The Chipettes enter the film in their birthday suits. How do these flicks not have sensor bars? Don't you know the 90s gave cartoon animals private parts? But what sucks most is they got some really funny voice talent behind them. Amy Poehler, Anna Ferris, and Christina Applegate. These are all very funny people who are given very unfunny things to do. I am Brittany, and this is my sister Eleanor. And I'm their sister Jeanette. Although I feel more like an Olivia, or sometimes Anyway, we are the Chipettes. <laughs> I haven't seen such a wasted Anna Ferris performance since... Okay, a lot, but that Keanu cameo was pretty funny. What makes it even stranger is that they have almost the exact same voice as the chipmunks. They're, I dare even say, the exact same character. Just give them the Tumblr treatment. Mr. Hawk? That voice, I can't get it out of my head. This trope of course goes back a long ways of incorporating a gender swap of a famous character, or characters. And apparently it still equals gold. Well, they're not the only ones who can exploit that Chester! Duh! Are you aware that there's three strange ladies with confusing shirts in there? Never mind all that. We are going to explore Doe's backstory. Ooh, that's exciting. <laughs> Finally, the bum mythos will be revealed. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me just see what they do with it in the movie. Tell me a little something about yourselves. We grew up in a small town, population 300. Fascinating. Great. Impress me. Yeah, okay. I guess we don't need to know your backstory. Oh. Come on, it's like how Baze and the blind guy know each other in Rogue One. They work together. That means we immediately know everything about them. I think that's more how they met each other rather than how they knew each other. Exact same thing. All we need now are some dance numbers. Go! Oh, uh, um... Yeah, on second thought, the movie seems tired with that too. Now it's about Alvin the chipmunks trying to blend into high school. So, um, go to school, I guess, while performing some musical sequences. I guess going to dance school could kill two birds with one stone. But be prepared to change your motivations on a whim. That's what makes the big bucks. Isn't that more how it makes the little rodents? That's good. Keep making bad jokes like that. That apparently makes a lot of money too. Oh, okay. we got a lot more of those. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> So, just as Cross is amazed that two trios of talking chipmunks came to him to start a music career and both of them seem to look and act identical to each other. I mean like, stars fucking align, that's pretty amazing. It's abandoned to see how Alvin and the gang are getting along in high school. Look what I can do. Oh, you are the adorable. <laughs> Oh, that's right, I forgot this movie comes with a note. Every time certain lines from this film are uttered, an award-winning playwright shoots himself. You might want to see how Lin-Manuel Miranda is doing. But one of the jocks is jealous of their popularity. Girls, please, private conference. 
We will, of course, obey because, I don't know, chicks. They, of course, don't get along, forcing the chipmunks to fight back. Go bad. He jiggles when I poke him. Apart from driving this movie's kill count to rival that of 2016, take a look at how they animate his face. Jiggles when I poke him. Good God! It looks like the poster to the next film, Chip Ceased! This gets him a trip to the principal's office. I should suspend all three of you. Please do. Okay. How unfocused does a film have to be when looking at a bobblehead made it into your script? She says I should suspend you. He says please do. Ah oh, crap, I just wrote that into the script. Ah, oh, what do I care? It's Elvin and the Chipmunks. But of course violence towards others is fine as long as the principal is a fan of your work. I just cannot believe that you're actually sitting in my office. I have all of your CDs. Promise me that you won't say anything. The faculty ever found out about this, I could... The higher-ups don't take well to furry pedophiles. What? I mean, just a fan, just a fan. So she tells them there's a music competition where the winner gets $25,000 that they can use to save their music program. Because I guess this is the plot now. Oh, never mind. We're back to the blending in plot again. You're next, furball. You talking to me? You talking to me? I'm the only one here, so you must be talking to me. Really? We left a pause for that joke. Oh, booyah! Dude's got hands. We can definitely use them on the team. Okay, I guess this is the plot now. It looks like Alvin is trying to be a sports star when- I wanna know what love is. Okay, I guess we're back to this plot again. So the chip bats are gonna compete against the chipmunks. Oh, at Trent, we didn't have a family anymore. Oh wait, Theodore feels like the family's falling apart. I guess this is the plot now. Oh look, Toby recognizes their teacher from when they were in high school and is in love. Really? We're throwing this in too. Okay, okay, I will play your goddamn game. Malcolm. Yo. The dog girls are suddenly in love with you. <laughs> Why are they in love with me? You met in school. Oh, now I know everything. Oh, girl. What? You have to score the winning touchdown at a football game. Which one? Anyone. Chester, go. For Shinizu. I need you to hate each other while also preparing for a dance competition. What? True, it's going against what you originally were, but that doesn't matter when money's involved. Go. Baby, you. You are so pretty and smart. And you. You are the handsomest man in the world. <laughs> Why did that insult him? I usually say in the universe. <laughs> Malcolm, you need to be angry now. Get revenge on somebody. Who? I don't care, anybody. Neil Patrick Harris. <gasps> hey, we love Neil Patrick Harris. Critic, what should I do with this ball from the team, the 4-9-E-R-S? <laughs> hey, 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 look at that. You need to settle your differences in a dance-off. All right, river dance. Oh, 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 did you say a dance off? No, we're onto something different. Oh, but we got a perfect dance instructor. No, 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 you need to now be injured and out of half of the movie. Um, I think we'd be better at that. You're in charge of finding a cat to almost never talk about. I had a cat once. It was ten years ago. That's way too much attention. More vague, more vague. I find your lack of vague disturbing. <laughs> We have about five to ten cliché plots to confuse people into thinking we know what we're doing. Now, off to your bunches of stories. Oh, are you sure I can't be somebody's father? Beat it! With pleasure. Beat it, beat it, beat it, beat it. No one wants to be defeated. This had better be a big hit. It wouldn't be the first time I've obliterated these rodents. Chip pets are teamed against the chipmunks in a school competition. You have the only other singing chipmunks in the world, ass face, and you're putting them in a school competition? What the fuck? And the school agrees there'll be a big competition to see which one they send to the... uh... competition. This creates friction with Alvin, who doesn't want to perform, but instead wants to play football. This looks like a job for a Dutch oven joke. 
Dutch oven! Not the Dutch oven! Oh, anything but the Dutch oven! Must find fresh air before it's too late! It's sad in a chipmunks movie when I had to make the very real argument at least they didn't eat shit. Oh, Toby? This is my contractually obligated cameo! All good here, come home soon, bye! But that doesn't seem to help things as Alvin gets way too into his game. I'm gonna crack you like an acorn and eat you for dinner with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. You're right, movie. More kids do need to see Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> he wins on air, bud logic, but sadly that means he misses the competition. And now, let's hear it for a group that will rock you like a hurricane. She's gonna make the front page of the news someday and not in a good way. The Chipmunks! But they admit Alvin's not there and they can't go on without him, resulting in the Chipettes winning. I realize how devastated you Chipmunk fans must be. I'll have to carve Alvin Y in the back of my skull until it makes it right! This causes Theodore to run away to the zoo but gets cornered by a bird. Oh, careful! He might look down at you if you were actually there! Oh, not literally! Oh, the suspense! Will he step forward as the trainer offers him a treat? <laughs> Guys, that was huge! Well, if by huge, you mean... not huge. It's a fish! Oh, Ian but a talent agency was watching a random school video, as agencies do, and decided to give the Chipettes a chance of a lifetime. Guess who's opening up for Britney Spears at the Staples Center tonight? <laughs> She's at a crazy enough point where singing chipmunks can open for her. Who missed the school contest? It's never about that stupid school contest. A contest so stupid I knew an agency would be watching it! He wants to split the girls up, though, and when they refuse, he takes matters into his own hands. Okay, who likes barbecue? Barbecue. Because I know this awesome little barbecue restaurant in the valley that makes the best roasted chipmunk. Korean place? I don't know what's funnier. The fact that roasted chipmunk would be the happy ending, or the fact that this is still a better girl rock and roll story than Jem. If someone was barbecued in that, though, it would be a better movie. The school competition goes on, though, with their opening act that... honestly should win. I know talking chipmunks are amazing, but when you look past that, these guys really are better. But Alvin and the gang find out about the chipettes and try to save them. Except in the first film, when the chipmunks were in a cage and they skipped the lame, pointless climax, this time we get the lame, pointless climax! Oh, yep, fucking pee! Yeah. Yes! Those will be the most memorable words that we ever take away from the Donald. I suppose when you think about it, there's- How is he tweeting about me already? I'm not even done with the joke! They say they can make it back to the school competition in time with their good friend, Digger. I'm gonna get a little help from my friend, Digger! Roger that, Alvin! Look out! Whoa! Feels like I'm back at the racetrack! Don't make me do it. Please, God, don't make me do it. Who's Digger? Digger is a character from NASCAR when shown on the Fox Network. How dare you make me look up NASCAR, you monsters! Cross chases him down with a toy helicopter, because a toy NASCAR would have been too obvious, as they tried to get the remote out of his hands. I'm going for it! Grab my ankles! Jeanette's story the whole time! How friggin' obvious! Here, I thought maybe, just maybe, it was about the concert, the football game, going to school, parenting, working together, egos, Toby's girlfriend, jealousy, fitting in, family values, or trusting your heart. But no! It was about Jeanette conquering her fear of heights, which has never been brought up in the entire movie until right now! <clears throat> Sorry. 
So they get to the concert at the school and perform. I give you the chip ass and the chip mug. But we haven't had any time to rehearse. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the judges haven't voted yet. Of the $25,000! Lot of money to give away, just on the fly. And it's West Eastman High! You know, the uh, first act was technically a lot better. Yeah, yeah okay, the chipmunks win. Guys, creepy announcer, gladly give it to Creepy Principal. This seems very wrong. Meanwhile, at the stadium, despite the movie pretty much promising us Britney Spears, she never shows up in the film, and instead we get this. All the single ladies, all the single ladies, if you want to get married, have a ring, put your rings on it. Again, is this really that much different from how we've seen Britney before? I'm kind of shocked the audience could tell the difference. She's a human! Okay, 2007. So that was the suck wool. It's all over the place, not funny, boring, unimaginative, and has no focus. It's stupid, it's dumb, it's dumb pit. And I just imitated it perfectly. Practically line for line, I got the formula down. That means I'm gonna be making millions in a matter of seconds. All I have to do is count all the moolah I'm gonna make from this point on. And the turnout is... Average? Uh, what about being number one at the box office? Uh, Critic, none of the Chipmunk movies were ever number one at the box office. Ever. What? They did okay because they wrote on the success of other December movies. They've been the one family film clearly not trying to win any awards. But then why do so many people go and see it? High-pitched voices are cute! Duh! Aww. So by that logic, I can make a million just by... Quit pro quo. I tell you things, you tell me things. Yes and now, Clarice. Go ahead. You know, the movie was right. More kids do need to see this film. And now they will because you put it in the kids section on Netflix. The significance of the moth is change. Caterpillar into chrysalis or pupa. That'll be one of millions of angry parents. Your money's already mine, I don't care. I'm the nostalgia critic. I don't get it, I just exploit it. No, oh, it's like Hannibal ate Fred. I smell a squeakquel. You use Evian skin cream, but not today. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it, so you don't have Shh. to- Sorry, I'm kind of in the middle of a wedding. Marriage is what brings us here today at Alabama Comic Con. Yeah! And gun show. We are here to join these two beloved Devil Boner and Hyper Fan. Where is she anyway? Oh, she wanted to wait for the video to start so she could walk down the aisle. Okay, Bone Puncher! She looks beautiful. Yeah, instead of walking down the aisle with her father, she chose to walk with that glowy effect. To witness this union is Benny Devil Boner's best man. Yeah, but not the shot though! <laughs> and nostalgia critic, hyper fangirls. Um, I think the term we're going with is Butler of Honor. Okay, cool, whatevs. The rings, please! <laughs> Dearly committed, have decided to write their own vows. I want you. I want you. Then by the power invested in me, by me, I now pronounce you psycho husband and stalker wife. You may now kill. Well, that works too. Hey, sing 
seeing how this is a convention, we're already clearly liquored up. Let's just have the reception here. Peppermint schnapps for all. <laughs> My Zuta. So, how does it feel to officially be Hyper Boner? As excited as the name sounds. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, if you excuse us, we're going to see if the flowers are smokable. I already did. They are! Oh, that's <laughs> a great game. I'll admit, I didn't think Hyper Boner was a good idea. But after seeing all the joy displayed, it's clear that Hyper Boner is going to last a long time. Ain't it the truth? Nice suit. Back at ya. Oh, doesn't Hyper Boner look up? Incredibly up. Whenever anybody sees you, they'll say you can't keep Hyper Boner down for years to come. Yeah, that's about what we predicted. You know, sometimes a name can spark a lot of possibilities. There's been so many films and shows that suggest something is going to be amazing just based on the title alone. Some of them work, some of them don't. And then there's movies that thought the name first and clearly wrote around it. You know where I'm going with this. Chipwrecked is the third in the Questioning Humanity film series based on Alvin and the Chipmunks. And if you can believe it, it's not the last. By this point, it's made clear that a bad pun is literally enough to throw millions of dollars into a film shoot exploiting kids' inability to say no to shit. It's just as phoned in and tired as you would think, but why generalize when we can go into more detail? Well, I can think of a lot of reasons, but if I'm allowed to leave a wedding early so I don't have to listen to any more hyperboner jokes, I guess I can suffer for you. This is Chipwrecked. The film knows parents want to go home as quickly as possible, so it jumps right into it with barely an opening at all, which is fitting because this is barely a movie at all. No, Jason Lee, you can't pack up and leave the franchise that easily. Where you been? Where have I been? Trying to board the ship. It's not easy looking older and sadder with every passing film. So they're going on a family vacation and... Nope, that's all the setup we get. We don't even know where they're sailing to. But I do know the next fourth song in their bullshit soundtrack. This is your captain speaking. I'm glad to know there's great security on the ship microphone. Attention, attention, the moon landing was fake and Earth is flat. Yeah, bet you didn't know you were rooting for that kind of character, did ya? All kids are now allowed to play on the adult-only serenity deck. But only the douchebag ones who exist in movies to make punchlines work. Wow, gotta love how invested some of those families look. Was this take eight? They're pretending they're excited about a table with nothing on it. No wonder they had to switch out these kids mid-edit. There, I did the thing. Now let me contemplate my life's mistakes. So Dave tries to set more rules for his rodent ruffians. I'll start acting like a grown-up when you start. I whip my tail back and forth. I whip my tail back and forth. I whip my tail. Not even five minutes in, and we're on song three. Why don't you just implant the soundtrack into my brain like Dark City? You know you would if you legally could. This is so not fair. Not to us, and certainly not to the captain. Why the hell are you wearing towels? You literally showed up in the films naked. You don't even wear pants. I follow none of this. Where are you going? To the casino. Oh no, 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 no. Dave said we're old enough to make our own decisions. You know, I'm starting to think this whole film exists just so everybody could go on a cruise. What are we shooting today? Um, the bed, the floor. Let some CG artists who want to work for Pixar do the rest. Casino time! Shitty song four, by the way. You will hate this soundtrack more than Frozen. Stepping on my friend's foot or her busted, tired, little dance moves. Ah, one of those common occurrences where the entire casino goes quiet and three grown women feel they have to show up squirrels. Have you ever casinoed, yo? Those squirrels could be lighting fires and nobody would look up from their hand. I feel like I'm watching a dance-off between Happy Meal Toys and the Powerpuff Whores. What the hell is going on? right now we call that move the i'm a little teapot seizure was there a glitch in the matrix who choreographed that one the rhapsody street kids come on we'll do better in our dance off against the muppet babies 
Dave, meanwhile, has a talk with the ship's mask god and X Five Nights at Freddy's character when he reveals himself to be a familiar face. Hallelujah. Oh, thank God! I don't care that you called filming this the most unpleasant experience of your career. That just means you understand the pain I'm sitting through! What are you doing here? I'm working, Dave. It's the same conversation that David Cross fan has when he sees him in one of these films. What are you doing here? I'm working. Not too many record labels are interested in hiring the guy who blew it with the chipmunks, blew it with the chipettes, and passed on Justin Bieber. To be fair, it is hard to tell the difference between the chipmunks and Justin Bieber. Bieber's a little shorter. I'll be watching you. Like a hawk! Oh, David Cross, you're like Jesus giving Ben-Hur water. You don't fix everything, but I'm glad you're here. Dave sees they left Theodore alone to watch Cookie Monster's meth meltdown as he notices everyone has vanished. Alvin? Simon? Girls? I forgot your names like the rest of the audience, so I just call you Girl Alvin, Girl Simon, and Girl Theodore. He finds them in the casino and warns them that if they don't behave, he won't take them to win their possible International Music Award. I can tell you're just as concerned about that as I am. You're all lucky Captain Corelli's allowed you one more activity. Shuffleboard. Yeah, by now Jason Lee is realizing this isn't gonna be as easy as the last film where he literally slept through his performance. This time he's gotta suffer with the rest of them. Hey, hey, wake up, you cheater! Time to turn punishment into punishment. You get it? I took the pun in punishment and turned it into fun, but kept the ishment. It's wordplay! It's at times like this I wish this was the boat from Speed 2 so Willem Dafoe could grab them and throw them into the ocean. I can dream, but I always have to wake up in a world where this exists. Alvin goes parasailing on a kite and of course gets caught in the wind as well as Dave's chair. This won't end well. The original tagline for the film! <laughs> it's okay, this happens a lot. I'm actually a terrible parent. Call DCFS! <laughs> David Cross gets forcibly roped in, again a fitting metaphor, as they fall into the water far away from where the chipmunks fell into the water. Just one bite. No. A nibble? No nibbles. Maybe I can just lick the glaze. Your ass is on it. Show some dignity. Meanwhile, Jason Lee and David Cross are clearly not in the same water they were a second ago, as they discover an island that the chipmunks discover as well. The chipmunks build a fire and... Yeah, we're a man short of theatrical runtime. Go ahead. Kumbaya, my lord. Kumbaya, kumbaya. It's funny because we hate everything now. So Lee and Cross make it to the island, and as you imagine, they don't get along. Cross repeats what he told the producers of this film every day. I'm not one of your chipmunks that you can just boss around and stuff into a cage whenever you feel like it. Meanwhile, the chipmunks make sure their auto-tuning still works. I'm a survivor. I'm gonna make it. Weird theory, what if they're the deformed, time-traveling rabbits from Lost, and they're just trying to make their way back home? It's a weak theory, I know, but I'd much rather work on that than work on watching this! It's Bark. Yeah, for breakfast. Oh, it's been forever since our last all-you-can-eat buffet. Crazy suggestion, guys. We eat Theodore. You know he'll eat us if we don't eat him first. They find a little bit of food in the jungle and everybody chases after it. My precious! My precious! Oh, look, Gollum says that! It's fine because Gollum says that! He says that! But they come across an unexpected individual, a woman named Zoe, played by Jenny Slate. I'm not a monster, I'm Zoe, and I'm, I'm clearly a girl. I was on my way to be funny on Bob's Burgers, but I guess I can stop and be unfunny here. Alvin and the Chipmunks? Who and the what now? I'm sure you've heard of the Chipettes. Who? Ra, 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 Whatever, you're a food source. Kindly get on the fire. So it looks like she's trapped on the island too. For how long, you might ask? A week? 
Week and a half, maybe she also fell from the cruise ship. Eight or nine, um, years. Nine years? You know, what was I expecting? Logic, joy, charm out of a chipmunk movie? Of course she's been there for nine years. Why else would her skin barely be dirty, her hair permed, her clothes spotless, and she's crazy enough to talk to sports balls like Castaway, yet smart enough to make a house even George of the Jungle will call bullshit on? Did I expect more? No. Did I get less? Somehow. Simon is bit by a spider and starts to go through a strange transformation in his sleep. <laughs> Knowing this movie, he'll probably wake up like this. Are you alright? I'm fine. Actually, believe it or not, the real change he goes through is even stranger. He wakes up as a Rambo-type adventurer who is also a smooth romantic and has a French accent. Bonjour, my friend. Would you care to join me on my adventure? The adventure called Alive! I don't get it. What the hell is this referencing, hinting at, or anything? He's like this through a good chunk of the movie. Like, we're supposed to understand what this is satirizing. And I'll just be honest, I have no idea what's supposed to be funny about it. It's like someone went to a random word generator and was like, I'm literally gonna let you write Simon's character. Just give me three random words. Rambo, French, horny. Okay, those last two are the same thing, but it's shipwrecked. What do I care? As you'd imagine, the girls, particularly Jeanette, find Simon's new personality irresistible. What are you doing? What I've wanted to do since the moment I laid my eyes all over on you. Deflower you. No good? I got it from this Weinstein guy's pickup book. After dancing the hormones away, they come across a beautiful waterfall. means that joke will really be dated as soon as it's used in a chipmunk movie. Simon dives into the water and discovers a room full of gold. But he's down there for so long that everyone starts to worry about him. Where are you? Ah, tension averted. Continue with your tedium. Maybe this will be a way to make it up. Were there any other jewels or gems or... I had already been gone from my Jeanette far too long. Uh, what? No. What? I think he was asking what the joke for that scene was. Did anybody catch it? Maybe this will No, don't rewind it. I'm fine leaving it a mystery. Meanwhile, Jason Lee and David Cross continue to wander through the jungle and... Wait, let me guess. He's trying to prove how much he loves his kids, and his kids are trying to learn responsibility. I really messed you up. You don't need to show me a clip! That's always it! It's the only thing guaranteed in these movies outside of out-of-nowhere shitty subplots! They found it! The rest of the treasure is mine. All mine! <laughs> so Zoe's a villain now, hmm? I've had bigger twists with my lemon in my rum and coke. With no lemon, but hell, let's just go with it. When Zoe finds she can't reach the gold room herself, she decides to kidnap one of the chipmunks to help her. Okay, even for this movie, that was really weird. <laughs> I didn't think there was a way to make an evil basketball version of my neighbor Totoro. Surprisingly, it hadn't crossed my mind that much, but you accomplished it, movie. Here's your trophy. The chipmunks find Lee and Cross and build a raft together to get off the island, but oh no, not only do they realize Jeanette is missing, but a volcano is about to blow. And the professor made a lie detector out of coconuts. I think this is one of those situations where even if you fix it, it doesn't fix it. On top of that, Simon is hit on the head with a golf ball, snapping him out of his delusion. The movie seems to have forgotten it was a spider bite that caused him to act strange and not a bump on the head, but the credits are so close, let's not slow things down. I'm coming with you. Oh, absolutely not, it's too dangerous. Remember I said someday I may need to disobey you? Sorry, Dave, but I gotta disobey you. Um, you disobey him all the time. Absolutely nothing is being learned from this. Honestly, obeying him would be the strange thing. $342 million grossing movie. Zoe forces Jeanette to get the gold as Jeanette reminds us that even as jukebox musicals go, this one's still especially bad. S -O -S, please, someone help me. Oh, isn't there anyone to hear my other person singing sped up to sound like my voice? The others come across Zoe though as they try to rescue Jeanette. 
Take this knife that magically changes size in midair. Ah, ah, ah. No! It's tempting to blame Dave. I know. You know, why don't the three of us sit down for a minute and really think about what our agents did to us? Like, really mull it over. At the very least, we have David Cross's cynicism to get us through all this sappiness. I've been there. I wish I could get back all those years I spent plotting my revenge. No. No, don't you ruin Cross, movie! Hate, anger, regret, they're what consumed me. And they're consuming you. Don't you ruin it, movie! Don't you ruin- He was the only funny thing in any of these! It's not too late to do the right thing. No! Oh, David Cross! You were the chosen one! You were my brother! I loved you! Or not, again. I'm good either way, so... I don't want to sway you. Okay, that was funny! That went fine! I'm willing to put up with that! You are a cross I am willing to bear! They escaped the last minute color correction, and... that scathing smoke somehow, as they all sit down to think about what they've been through. Jeanette, I... I don't know what to say. I'm really sorry. Well... Apology accepted. Okay, people are way too forgiving of attempted murder in these films. Can't there be like a... something? Um, Dave? Yes, Alvin? I just wanted to say... Life lesson you were trying to teach me learned. Parallel life lesson you were trying to teach me learned. Look! How about plot device wrapping up things too well? Baby, Ian Hart! <laughs> Pass. Keep flying! They, of course, make it in time for the music awards. We never actually figure out if they win anything. I'm just assuming no, Chef Kip Cross is your agent. And the credits mercifully roll. So that was Chip Direct. It was tough to get through, and when you really think of... Oh, wait, we're still going? We're still going? I'm sorry, sir. We're gonna have to gate check those. Are you gonna charge me 25 bucks a bag? Bullshit, man! We had a deal! You roll the credits, we get to go! What the hell's left to show? The chipmunk's eating shawarma? Sir, please return to your seat. We're about to take off. But he... Sit! As an actress from an actual good CGI film, I hold superiority. <laughs> that almost killed my stuntman! Elvin! <laughs> and that, finally, is Chipwrecked. And I had to give him credit. It lived up to what it promised. It felt like I was watching people thrown off a ship and slowly die. It's such a rushed cash-in, that's not even disguising how much of a rushed cash-in it is. It has nothing for adults. What it has for kids you could get off of a children's screensaver, it's totally devoid of charm. And that is again for David Cross. Yeah, I have to give credit. I always enjoy seeing him in these films. Despite him clearly being above this material, he is the only one who can get a smile out of me with some of these awful lines. Aside from that, though, it's best to leave this piece of driftwood washed up on shore. And it just goes to show you can't really turn out anything of value when your base is nothing but a bad pun. Thank you, thank you. I can see hyperboner lasting a long time, too. I'm really having second thoughts about this hyperboner thing. Big time, yeah. I love your name, but I just don't think that it works for me. Yeah. Wait a minute. What if yours wasn't the last name that changed? What are you saying, honey bottoms? I'm saying that from this day on, I shall be known as... Devil Fangirl. Don't do that. Oh, thank God. You know, I really didn't want to. I was just kind of doing it to make you happy. Yeah, let's just keep our last names. Whatever keeps you just the way you are is fine by me. Come on, let's consummate our marriage the way that most newlyweds do. You mean by passing out because this sucked the life out of us? Uh -huh. You got it! Is your ring on the wrong finger? I'm too tired to notice. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. <sighs> Wrapping up these movies is like that scene of the Green Goblin terrorizing Aunt May. Finish it! <laughs> Finish it! Oh, evil! <laughs> Road chip. The last final.
final and end of the Alvin and the Chipmunks movies. I know those mean the same thing, just God, it's so calming to say. These movies have become such a cheap movie night for people wanting to unload their kids somewhere that it was actually released the same weekend as Star Wars The Force Awakens. Yep. This was the pity movie you took your children to if the actual movie they wanted to see was sold out. Not promising, but not surprising either. In this fourth installment of the Chipmunk saga, they went from a forest, to a concert hall, to stranded on an island, to a car. I don't know, this was the only pun they could think up in the 20 seconds it took them to write the script. Seeing how this one went out with such a whimper against Star Wars opening weekend, I figure this one deserves the same underwhelming bow out. Ring, 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 what's that nostalgia Craig cast? Yes, I'm not even using you because I want to give this movie so little attention. Click. Guess I'll get drunk. So let's finish this out not with a bang, but with a bull, oh, which is more than this movie deserves. Let's take a look for the final time at an Alvin and the Chipmunks movie. Road chip. Are we rolling? Okay, we're rolling. Theodore is live streaming his snuff films now. What that mean? This is actually a birthday message for Dave, slash going away party for the Chipettes, slash excuse for Alvin to throw a big party, slash lamest reason yet to open a film with a song number, slash, 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 slash them all! Happy birthday, Dave! Woohoo! Red Boo is here! Mm hmm, this cameo's putting my kid through college. All it cost me was survival therapy with David Cross. Happy birthday, Dwayne! It's Dave! That appearance was so awkward, why don't you just have Shaggy and Scooby shine a spotlight on it? Dave, played again by Jason Lee, returns home angry as hell and kicks everybody out. Were you surprised? No, I wasn't surprised, because hashtag Dave's party was trending on Twitter. Well, Mr. Coulier is quite the party animal. But I thought you guys were old enough to take care of yourselves. We are very mature. <laughs> Sorry, pizza toots. What would the early chipmunks be like if they just embraced the fart joke? <laughs> I want to spend as much time with you guys as I can before I have to go to Ashley's album release in Miami. You got another on the soundtrack. Impact something! The next day, Dave takes them mini golfing. That showed him. As a bully named Miles, played by Josh Green, ruins their fun. Ouch! What are you gonna do? We will continue this conversation when I'm back. <laughs> Damn it! Actually, got a laugh out of me. I better put in the photo album of moments that are actually funny from these films. This is Samantha. Sam, these are my boys. Oh, Shantae. <laughs> she's not Anna Ferris, but I think she's Anna Ferris. You're a doctor? I am. Did Dave mention that? You're wearing a stethoscope. <sighs> yes, I am. She has a look like, yeah, they wrote that in. I also have a nurse who always leaves her big red cross hat on. She's dating a plumber who always takes his plunger everywhere. My job's more than my occupation. It's my entire character. Oh, and this is my son, Miles. What? Hey, you guys having fun? Yeah, just getting some cotton candy. <laughs> this is not my idea of fun. No oh, boys always picking on kids smaller than them. And by boys, I mean 23 years old. What's this guy doing mocking children half his age? Animal children, celebrity animal children. Everything about this is weird. Give us back our brother. I just paid 20 bucks for it. I also sing. I Theodore's butt preferences concerns me not. Dave decides to look after Miles, you know, both of them being legal adults, as they drop by the recording studio where he gets the hots for a singer named Ashley. I thought you were like super famous or something. One day you're throwing back pink lemonades on Diddy's yacht in San Tropez. The next you're being confused for one of Chewbacca's toes. It's a tough life. Dave returns home asking the boys what they thought of Samantha. So what'd you guys think of Samantha? Oh, she's awesome. We loved her. Ooh, leftovers. You still talking about Samantha? The boys find an engagement ring suspecting that Dave is gonna ask her to marry him. Which means Miles will be their brother. So they get rid of the ring to stop the wedding because that's how it works. But Dave is heading out of town with her and it looks like Miles is gonna be the babysitter. Have a great weekend guys and boys. Try to show me you can handle some independence, okay? Show me you can do a full movie without a fart joke, I ain't too high. They tell Miles about Dave's plan to propose, and similar to them, he doesn't like it. 
I mean, would you want the Rhapsody Street Kids version of Chip and Dale as your siblings? Hello, boys. But someone remembered Jennifer Coolidge was a thing, so she suddenly enters the picture. I'm supposed to be keeping an eye on you, so I think I'll use this one. They called someone to babysit the babysitter? If these genders were reversed, this would be a horror film. They switched themselves out with squirrels to fool her. Which I'm not gonna lie, I want this animation as my desktop. As the boys get a ticket to Miami to stop Dave from proposing. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's that? Stuffed Alvin doll. I'm gonna need to see what's in that backpack, please. Oh no. Crazy eyes, don't ask her about toilet privileges. This is Alvin. He can twist, like Linda Blair almost. <laughs> <laughs> Dead. Now we know why this is the last one. She does a body search, though, with Simon hiding in his pants, wetting himself. Because PP is funny! That's not mine. You just holding it for a friend? I'll be damned. They made PP funny. STOP CONVINCING THE EFFORT WENT INTO THIS! I don't get paid enough. The fact that you're in this film is proof of that. They get on the plane where Alvin sits next to John Waters. Kids love a good John Waters joke! I recently flew next to the Chipeth, and they were ladies. Don't judge me! I saw Pink Flamingos! I do judge you. You did the same thing from Pink Flamingos. I'M MENTIONING PINK FLAMINGOS IN AN ALVIN AND THE Chipmunk MOVIE! But Theodore accidentally releases all the animals down below, who the shit brings a goat on a flight, and an air marshal arrests them. What could we possibly have done to make you hate us so much? I'll tell you what you did. Whoa, did I just die and this is the movie they show in hell? Where the hell did this come from? This guy had a minute of screen time and now he has a flashback? And on top of that, he suddenly becomes one of the main characters. All of this comes right the hell out of nowhere. Merry I'm Christmas. raising up with you. What? And the chipmunks. Grow up, James. <laughs> well, nice to know John Waters and David Lynch finally did a crossover. You provided the soundtrack to my heartbreak. But now it's payback time. Yeah, and John Williams scored The Phantom Menace. I don't blame him for that. No, I don't. They're put on the no-fly list as they escape into a cab with the air marshal following. I wish I could help you out, but I got a bar packed with people waiting to hear a band whose singer is stuck 50 miles from here with a flat tire. And to make things worse, they were chipmunks. That's very important to point out. So you can guess where this is going. Love to live in that parallel dimension. Now we're given another song number, but the air marshal locates them in the middle of it. I have a reason to believe there's a fugitive chipmunk in your beard. Wasn't that the last line in Titanic? A barroom brawl starts as the chipmunks escape but have nowhere to go. People look out for themselves. What, you think my dad was thinking about anyone other than himself and left me and my mom? You're the road chip! Nobody gives a shit! You left when I was only five. If Dave and your mom end up together, He's a good person. You came out during Star Wars! <sighs> Look, Dad's overrated. Eventually, you will get over him leaving. Star Wars! <laughs> Nothing but Star Wars! The next morning, they continue their journey. Walking now. That's right, just keep walking like you don't want to kill yourself. I saw you eye that river. It's not deep enough to finish you off. The air marshal finds them again. How many planes is he missing tracking these pests down? As they run into, let me guess, another song sequence? Let's just call this soundtrack with a movie if you're lucky. And without a movie if you're really lucky. Next morning, the boys continue walking, carrying several beads so they've shown their tits, as the air marshal wakes up in a hotel room. Thugs! Who are you? It's Vito, the uh. band's manager. Oh no, not another New Orleans band I banged! They finally meet up with Dave and Samantha at the airport, who are so unhappy with them that they take them on their trip to Miami. Do they have any idea how to punish their kids? Because of you three, I might not even get to the record release. What's next, taking him to Chuck E. Cheese's? It's a rodent with games! That is the only two things they know! I just needed a little snack to get me from lunch to dinner. Look what I want! Isn't he cute? Well, this is more surprising than that time I took him to Disneyland to find a toothpick. How do these things happen? They make it to Miami, where they abandon them AGAIN while they go out to dinner. The Manson family was more of a unit than you! Good luck proposing without this! But Alvin steals the engagement ring, which calls for celebrating with Oh Christ- ANOTHER SONG! TURN DOWN THE 
I never thought I'd say this, but a rapping dog on the Titanic is making more sense for a musical number. But Miles feels bummed out because he thought he would actually have a daddy. Yaw, how emotional. You're road ship! Oh, watch out! Theodore saves him from a car, though, and it looks like it did quite a bit of damage. Yo, Theodore, get up, please! <gasps> no! Yeah, I remember all the reviews I read that said this movie sucks, but they had the balls to kill Theodore. It's like when Fred Flintstone insisted he bury Barney. Everyone remembers where they were. <laughs> but Jesus! How do these movies turn cute to ugly so easily? It looks like an image from a Slayer album. Does anyone sleep after seeing these films? Miles, we are so sorry. We haven't been fair to you from day one. Yeah, the way you guys started picking on him by, this makes no sense. So they decide to chase after Dave to get him his ring back. But they yet again have a babysitter for the babysitter. Cause it worked awesome the first time. I like that he's hairy. Oh, Scruff is like cute. Mm -hmm. it's like, hi, I am adorable, but I'm also an animal. The fact that he is a chipmunk just cements my bestiality. They get the ring, but the air marshal finds them again and they disguise themselves as hood ornaments. <laughs> Yeah, that's the movie I would reference there. They escape yet again, though, and make it to the restaurant Dave and Samantha are at. Evasive maneuvers! Nutmeg! He shoots his gun! Nice, Alvin! Oh, Alvin, go! Did you hear that? It sounded like somebody yelled Alvin. Because I get a residual check every time somebody does that. They get the ring to Dave, but it turns out it wasn't his, and he had no intention of proposing. You're not proposing? I'm sorry, Samantha. I'm, I'm not. No offense, I just saw Heartbreakers and you were weird in it. So, I was holding it for my sound engineer. Will you marry me? A breath mint? Well, we just killed a man's dreams. <laughs> and the man? The only reason we're not headed back to LA right now is because I have to be here. <sighs> just say it, the only reason you're not doing anything is because you're lazy. You're so lazy there's somehow 20 minutes left even though the movie should obviously be over. What the hell is there even left to fill it with? A total eclipse of the heart. Yes, God knows there's not enough singing in this. They remember there's chipettes in this movie, but they're off hosting American Idol. And admit it, it's been so long since you've seen it, you had to remind yourself if Chipmunks actually hosted it at some point. They did. Alvin gets their help as they arrive to the show and hijack whoever the hell was going to perform before they arrived. They sabotage a lot in this movie, don't they? Alice? Barry has something he'd like to ask you. Again. They set up the proper engagement this time, leading to the words every proposal should include. Thanks, Chipmunks. No marriage starting with those words is gonna be alright. As they sing one last song for Dave. Even in your mistakes, give affection. <laughs> Look at that Ashley girl. She's like, yeah, I can pretend I'm into this. <laughs> we fuck up the Chipmunks! Who I'm just realizing are pointless because we already won Dave over. We got for the trailer, though, we can sucker more kids in with that. We're so sorry we came to Miami without telling you. We just didn't want to lose you. Is, is that what you guys think? We already did this, didn't we? Wasn't the whole movie about them learning that? Guy Pierce from Memento has a better memory than you guys. I mean, I, I know I haven't really been around much lately, and things are changing for us. But what can I say? We Bear Bears is just more fun than you. And I promise to be a better dad from here on out. What are you talking about, Dave? You're the best dad we could ever have. Nobody abandons us and gets less and less screen time with every passing film like you. The chipmunks and Miles get along. He even goes to a party with Ashley. There's only one last thing to wrap up. Alvin, Simon, and Theodore, do you agree to this adoption? Adoption? <gasps> yeah, this has technically been a kidnapping for several years. I figure at least I should be legally ignoring you. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, where am I supposed to be looking? Yeah, whatever. When do I say the thing to wrap up this nightmare? Alvin! <laughs> I want a separation. So there it is, the final Chipmunk movie. And full disclosure, it is technically the best one, but that's kind of like squirrel shit being better than dog shit. It's still shit. 
The writing actually has a few good lines, there's better pacing than the other movies. And even with the absence of David Cross, the only funny part of the other films, it still did manage to get a few laughs. But that's the key word, few. It's still mostly unfunny, unfocused, gimmicky, and all around pointless. If you got little kids, I guess it's fine to put on as a harmless distraction, but for the rest of us, this is a bit of chipmunk feces we won't be missing anytime soon. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and this was the final chipmunk movie! Shut it down! Shut it down forever! I remember it, and now I'm gonna try to forget it. I have a reason to believe there's a fugitive chipmunk in your beard.